Are you ready, Miami? Welcome check, check, to check, check. Lipa! Make some noise, America's Backyard! Hi. So. Hi. Oh my God, this is so much fun, hello. Girl, see, we had a little conversation uh, before Dua came downstairs and I let her know, I was like, they have been waiting for you for literally almost a year. And I don't think you believe me. So guys, make some noise if you've been waiting since September. Thank you guys so yeah. much. South Florida loves you. I loves feel you. so lucky. I, I don't think I've ever done a Q&A radio show that's like this. You guys are so, so fun. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, just so you know, Dua Lipa was at Bonnaroo last night. Got on a plane at 4 a.m. this morning just so she could be here with you guys tonight before her show tomorrow. So we understand. Um, I actually saw a tweet that somebody tweeted to you and it said, I think that there are three Dua Lipas in the world and none of them is ever not working. And I think that I would have to agree because girl, it seems like since Be The One came out, you have just been on the move and it hasn't stopped. It's been crazy. And there's only one of me, but <laughs> we, you know, it's just like the exciting part of my job is that I do get to go to a different place every single day. And I never do the same thing twice. And I never experience the same crowd twice. It's always new people, new fans, but it's also people that I've seen before, but mixed in with different people. And yep. it's, it's always a new experience and it's always really exciting. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for it all. Well, you know, speaking of that, you're so amazing with your fans. <laughs> but look at them, how could I, you not be? I, how could you not be? Right? <laughs> No, they, they, they are, they and are. The love is, is crazy. The but love is, is amazing and I've never felt anything like it. And honestly, I, I, I do everything for them. What do you think that that is? What do you think that, that, that you've done that has made this bond like this? I mean, is it the realness in your music? I know you use the word authentic a lot. I try to be as honest as possible and it, th the thing was, was while I was writing and when I first started writing, I wrote a song called Hotter Than Hell. Yes. And <laughs> thank you. It was that song that a fan came up to me in Stockholm and was like, this song made me feel really empowered and this song changed my life. And then at that point, I really realized that if I'm honest and if I really tell my stories, um, then, you know, maybe the fans will be able to, to to, to see that we all go through the same thing, that we all feel the same thing and in the hopes that you can relate to it. Who, who here has connected with a Dua Lipa song? Yeah, I, I, oh my. I listen to the album and I swear sometimes that you've been in my relationships. Like, for real, I'm like, girl, were you in the back seat? Like, so talk well, about that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's just the, the, it's like an ongoing theme. It's we all do really go through the yeah. same things in one way or another. We do feel the same things. It's just, I, I feel so lucky to have been given the opportunity to be able to speak things that feel very real and very honest to me and that people relate to it. Well, I think that that definitely transcends. Now, I know we've taken some audience questions. It's a little packed in here, so I feel like that's going to be a little tough. But are Dia and Kelvin with us? Yes. Hold on one second. We have people in the audience. Dia, Kelvin, are you out there? Am I crazy? Is it that? Oh, one? they're right here. They're right here. Oh, hello. Okay, well, oh, come I over if you have a question from somebody. This is our staff. Just come to me. Don't be shy. Come to me. Okay, no, 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 no. You had Twitter questions. What was one of the Twitter questions? We do have Twitter questions. So we put it out on Twitter today. We wanted to, okay. So we'll come back to that because it was a little, we didn't, not that we didn't expect a lot of people, but normally, a lot of people normally our team is in the audience and there was no room for them. So 
I'm one of those dorky people that does a lot of research. Has anybody seen the documentary on Dua from Fader Magazine, right? Wow. So it's very cool. They did like a 10 minute documentary on you and it was amazing, but you made a comment and you talked about your music and you were basically saying how when you strip everything else away, the production and it's just you and a piano, yeah. the song should still be as powerful as it was with all the extras. Absolutely, and I still stand by that. I feel like when you're writing a song, you know, before all the production comes in, you still just have to have the bones of a, of a proper song. Yeah. And that's how Hotter Than Hell started, where it was just piano and a kick drum. And then it kind of it escalated from that yeah. point onwards, where then we added the production. But it was the song that was so strong that helped me really identify what my sound was. Well, first of all, did you write Hotter Than Hell in Miami? Because... Right now, tell me Lord. about it. Good I am Lord. definitely not dressed for this weather. <laughs> you look Honestly, I'm like in like double denim. Amazing. Right, but it looks fabulous, yeah, girl. You. Sometimes we gotta Thanks, sacrifice for the you. fashion. So, is it true that your parents allowed you to move to London at 15 by your damn self? Yes, that's true. <laughs> I, have, I have really cool parents, but we had a lot of trust between yeah. us. And I tried to be a good kid, you know, because, because they did let me live on my own. I was trying to let them know where I was at all times and, you know, waking up and calling them and letting them yeah. know that I got in school. And, I guess the main thing for them was like, as long as you finish school, then you can do whatever. So you did school. So you literally, at 15 years old, you guys, by herself, in London, which is an, it's an easy city. It's like being in Miami by yourself. It's an easy city it's to big, get into, yeah. it's to get distracted in. Yes. But you managed to keep yourself focused. I know you talked about, you, you know, you woke up and you were like, wait, there's nobody to do my dishes. There's nobody to do my laundry. Oh, uh, that day was the worst day. <laughs> <laughs> that day when I came to the realization that I have to do everything myself, that no one was going to tell me to tidy up my room, no one was going to tell me to put the dishes away, no one was going to tell me to like tidy up my flat. It was, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard because I really had to grow up before my time in a way. Yeah. I really had to grow up and learn to just do everything for myself. And I think that played a massive role in the way I kind of go about doing things for work. Yeah. And my career, I know that no one's gonna go out there and get it for me and I have to work really, really hard in order to do it myself. Hence and that's the, a big part of it. Hence the reason why you work every damn day. Yeah. Now guys, I know it can be a little difficult to hear in the back, but I can hear people up in front asking people to like shh a little bit. So again, I promise we're gonna get to the music and all of that, but we want everybody to be able to hear because I know a lot of people have waited a long time to be this close to doing and to have her share her story. So in fact, we have one young little Look at you, my oh, fabulous hello. Can you hear us? Aurora has a question for you. What inspired you to write music? What inspired me to write music? Ew. Well, it's a very good question. Um, my dad was a musician, and I've always grown up around music, and I've always been very inspired by music. And I think inevitably, being in such a musical household, that kind of inspired me to want to do that. Do you want to come a bit closer? Yeah, um, and that was kind of that was that was the main thing that really inspired me. That made me want to just sing and dance. And when I moved to Kosovo at the age of eleven, I didn't have the same opportunities I did in London. And I decided that I was going to move back to London and just really focus on songs and try to do something on a global scale. And I feel very lucky to be in Miami tonight doing this. So now, yes. Oh my goodness, my precious. Um, so speaking of doing things on a global scale, new rules crossed over the one billion mark on video I saw you guys. I can't believe that. Girl, that is absolutely like, that's, been, that's like people have spent hours and days of their lives it's, watching that video. Honestly, that video took a whole life of its own. We shot it in Miami. Yes, she did. We shot it in Miami, so it's always really special to come back here. Um, but it was, it was like, I, I don't, I can't even describe what it felt like when you first released it and all of a sudden, it was the first song that within a day, the video went to a million views and that was like, oh my God, what's happening? Everything was so exciting. It was just, it was such a mind blowing experience and I had so much support from so many young female artists and that yeah. meant a lot to me and, um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the response. It was, it's been brilliant. Well, again, thank you guys. Give yourselves a round of applause because 1.2 billion streams is pretty impressive. Now, I love that you touched on, on the female artists and, and the empowerment that they've given you. First of all, I didn't realize that the new song that we're loving right now, One Kiss, was actually co-written by somebody I absolutely love, Jesse Reyes. Reyes. Yes. Um, now, if you didn't know, Jesse actually spent time working right in this area. Oh, she did? Yes, here in South Florida. She's Colombian. Any Colombians in the building? So I was really excited to see that because as a young woman and as somebody that is, that is doing what you are doing in this game, to be willing to work with other women is such a beautiful thing. Oh my God, absolutely. I feel, I feel so, it's so, for me personally, I find it much easier to speak to girls. Okay. And yes, can... make some noise for that. <laughs> And um, when, when I'm in the studio and a lot of the co-writers that I work with are girls. Yeah. Because I guess they just understand me on a different, different level. And I guess over time I've just made lots of friends with the co-writers, male and female, and they've just become some of my closest friends because they know me better than I know myself because I've opened up to them in a way that I probably haven't opened up to anyone. Just to be able to dig down really deep and get the songs that I want to get that really you know, bring out the true and honest story. Do you keep a diary and then kind of go back to that? Like, where do you pull from? Yeah. Do you give that to other songwriters? Like, here's my heart and my innermost I don't everything. show them my notes, but okay. I tell them. Got you. Just because, so that's still, it still is a form of diary. Yeah, so yeah. whenever something significant happens, I write it down. I make sure that, um, you know, I, I write down all the memories and when I go into the studio, if I still feel exactly the same way as I did when I first wrote it, then I'm gonna pursue it and put it into a song. Got you. What was the last thing you wrote down? Can you share that? Do you remember? Well, it's, it's on the next album, so oh. I can't. <laughs> I, I gotta keep it a it. secret. I <laughs> love it. I'll take it, I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> so over here, we have our Twitter questions. Kelvin and Diaz standing in the cut. So we got a question here from at 221 Winsteel. Uh, Arias? Arias una canción en español, would you make a song in Spanish? Ooh, um, my goodness. I would love to. I can't speak Spanish though. Will you teach me? All right. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of people that are willing yeah, to teach me. Quite I would a few love. tutors here, <laughs> Dua Lipa. I'm sure fun. they'd be more than willing to help. So back to, so obviously, there's a lot of people who can't speak Spanish that decide to make songs in Spanish, just so you know. You'll do just oh, really? fine. You'll do just fine. We'll talk about that. All right, we'll talk about that. Somebody later. just said it, Dua Lipa. I mean, somebody said Justin Bieber. Oh, yes. Just That's don't right. sing about taquitos and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, speaking of singing with people, though, you've collaborated with some amazing, amazing individuals. I watched the acoustic video of Scared to be Lonely. I didn't realize that Martin Garrix actually plays the yeah. guitar. Like, yeah, he does. I was blown away. Uh, Calvin Harris, obviously, Jesse, Miguel, Wale, Le Major Lazer, Chris Martin. What was the craziest, what's the craziest offer you've gotten since becoming this massive global superstar? I know they've got to come in because you're great on collaborations. Like, has anybody just blown your mind with an offer to collaborate? I think just in, just in general, every, every person that I've had the chance to work with has been so amazing and so humble and so down to earth and so talented. Not that I, I ever doubted their talents, but they were just so musical. Mm -hmm. And you get to see kind of another side of them and their, you know, their online persona and who they are, but then you get to really meet them yeah. and really understand the depths behind the music and who they are as an artist is really inspiring. So do you actually get in the studio and write with these people yeah. or are you guys writing separately and then kind of just? Well, a lot of the time I, I, I write my music. So I love to be in the studio and I love to work with a person. Um, like the Chris Martin um, collaboration, the Miguel collaboration, the Calvin collaboration, yeah. we all worked on those in the studio. Whereas the Martin Garrix one was a song that he already had, that he, gotcha. he kind of envisioned with me in mind. And I was like, I love the song and I would love to be on it. Yeah, just Martin Garrix had me in Casual. mind when he, yeah. when he wrote a song. I mean, hey, why not? I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty major. Yeah, it's really <laughs> exciting. And honestly, for me, it's, it's such a big deal because I do, I do still consider myself a new artist. You know, I, I, I love the fact that you're, you're very honest about your journey. Like, 
Before she made it, she was hostessing at a Mexican restaurant. You guys, right? Like, yeah. And I know you referenced that point when you actually got to quit that job yeah. as a big moment, like when you're kind of yeah. like, hey, mama, we made it moment. <laughs> it was that moment when I, well, basically, I was in the studio all day and then I was working in the evenings and I signed my deal and I was finally able to just go to the studio all day. And when I was done with studio, I'd go to bed and wake up the next day and go to the studio. And I was like, I love this feeling so much that I never, gonna, I never wanna let go of it. And so I'm gonna work really, really hard that I just stay on top of it. Which is why she's already, first of all, you gave us an album with 17 songs. 17 great songs. We're lucky to get an EP out of people these days. You know what I mean? Like six songs and they're like, yeah, that's it enough. It took us a while though. It took us a while. You know, the, the album was initially gonna come out a very long time before it actually did. And I got this tattoo on my hand that says patience because I, I took the time and I just kind of, because as a new artist, I wanted to release a lot more songs and I wanted a lot more people to kind of get to know me. And I didn't want to release an album with songs that people had already heard. So I wanted to keep working and creating new things. And I'm so, I'm so happy I waited the length I did, although it was really up upsetting mm -hmm. at the time because I hated the idea of letting people down and telling them that I had to postpone something. But I'm really, really grateful I did because I wouldn't have gotten songs like Homesick. I wouldn't have had a song like Lost Ooh. in Your Light, like IDGAF and New Rules and all this Can stuff. So. No Goodbyes is my song. Who loves No Goodbyes? Right. Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> That's a special one for me. I know you mentioned Homesick. There is um, a line in one of your songs where you say, you know, I see everything in blue and you see everything in red. Do you actually, well, I asked that question because you know, there's a lot of artists out there that actually see their music in colors. Mm -mm. Are, you, are you one of those people? I'm not one of those people. Okay. I don't see it. I kind of, you know, when I'm writing in the studio, I do initially envisage what, it, what the video would look like, what it would feel like performing it at a festival. Oh. Like, I remember Be The One for the first time. I, the, the, the only thing that would come to mind was how I would sound performing it live. And that was when I knew, I was like, yep, yeah, this is a song. This is a song? Yeah. I'm like train tracks, like toot toot in the background. That's, that's a first for Hit Sessions. Um, do we have another question, Dia, my we love? We do. I want to remind everyone to tweet us at Hits 97.3. They were taking all of your questions there. And Jonathan oh, okay, has a perfect. question all the way over here. What made you choose Miami to film New Rules? Well, um, it's always exciting when you're filming a music video because depending on the treatment, you kind of get to pick where you want to go. And for me, it was like, oh, I want to go somewhere that I've never been to before. Ooh. Preferably somewhere really nice and warm. And given the treatment and kind of we needed the sun, I was like, Miami seems like the perfect place. And that's exactly what we did. And we got to have a little break as well. So it was lovely. Have you fallen in love with Miami though? Since? I mean, I know only tiny little bits of it. Like, I didn't get to explore as much as I would like, but mm -hmm. I loved it. Like, I loved the ocean. I went and swam in the night. I just sunbathed, Ooh. I chilled. It was mm. lovely. The food was amazing. So you loved it? Yeah. Well, you're welcome here absolutely anytime. Oh my God, my love. as long as you guys will have me, I'll we be We love having you. Now, I know you used to post covers on YouTube. I did, yeah. You know, you never say I was like a YouTube star, but you did things. But now it's cool because people are posting covers of your songs. Yeah. Like, do you ever go in and just like watch them or like I love comments? watching them. I also get lots of them sent to me. Uh -huh. Like on a daily basis, I get lots and lots of covers. And what's so amazing is when I watch them, I know exactly what it feels like to be behind the camera, to put that camera on and to kind of just sing to, to yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's lovely. I, I absolutely love Are it. Anybody out here do YouTube covers? Anybody? Right, I know we have a few. So do you have any advice for those out here pursuing music? Because let's be real, it's a long road. You it know, is a nobody long road. Nobody makes it overnight. There's it's a lot a that goes road. into it. And I think the most important piece of advice is work really hard, believe in your dream and your art, um, be persistent, and... Don't take no for an answer. Did anybody ever tell you no? Yeah, there have definitely been a lot of times when some people have been like, oh, you know, you're not, you're not the right thing for us, or 
you know, we don't think that this song is the one. And I really had to kind of persist and push through and be like, this is what I want to be my next single. And this is what I want to be the first song that people hear from me. And I think a lot of that, I've just kind of, it helped me become more and more confident, yeah. standing my ground. Well, I was going to say, um, you love Pink, Christina Aguilera. You kind of grew up with those artists. Yeah. And they're very strong females. Yeah. But they've talked about how this business can be tough, especially when you're first starting and labels have an idea of who they want you to be totally. and the music that they want you to sing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like somehow you've avoided I think, being pigeonholed that way. I think, you know, before I signed my deal, I already kind of had, a, had an idea of what I wanted my sound to be. And so it was a lot about finding a team that kind of believed in my dream just as much as I did. And so I didn't really have to change who I was. I just wanted people to really... I wanted people to listen to the music and really understand it just from that. And I was very, very lucky to be supported by my label and for them to believe in it just as much as I did. And then to put me out in front of fans who also felt the same. Now, I mean... Again, all these people are here to see you. They're going to see you sing. But I have to ask you, like, there's a lot of people in this room. I don't think we've ever had a hit sessions with this many people. So that's crazy in and of itself. Um, and thank you guys for rocking with us until we could make it happen. But I, I've got to ask you, when I watch your videos of you performing, and I know you've mentioned festivals, and you performed at the biggest festivals in the world, and you were on tour with Coldplay, and I know... When they do shows in South America, there's hundreds of thousands of people there. Yes. Do you prefer intimate venues where you can really connect with your audience? Or do you really love the energy that comes with 100,000 people? I love both. I love both. They both have different feelings, but they're both really, really special. And you, you create different... You get, you get a different energy from different rooms and from different crowds. And, you know, you could be in a stadium full of people or you could be in a room here in Miami and you could get exactly the same feeling. So you're working on new music. I, I know am. you've been out here racking up Brit Awards, being nominated for everything, <laughs> billions of streams. What, I don't know when you found time to be in the studio, girl. I spent a lot of time at the top of the year okay. um, writing for the new album. I feel like I we're a little like, are we having Beyonce moments in the fans? <laughs> Your hair is great. not Look long enough? Like, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I spent a lot of time writing at the top of the year. And it was kind of crazy. It was the fastest I'd ever written. And I wrote a lot. Oh. And I feel, I feel pretty good about it. But pretty I, good? I need to work on it some more. But I feel, yeah, I feel, I feel good about it. I, I love this about look it. that you're making it's right kinda, now. I don't know how to feel because I just don't, like, it, it's again, it's that feeling, the beginning stages of when you're writing again and you're kind of in the preparation of gotcha. thinking about what you want to release first and what you want to put out and what the videos are going to look like and what you want this whole new, like, era, if you will, be. Yeah. And it's... It's exciting, but it's scary. It feels like it's happening all over again, whereas this one just hasn't even ended yet. Yeah, I know. And so, yeah, there's lots of crazy feelings, but it's, it's again, a very personal album, and there's, it's about lots of different things, and I, I like to think that the topics are quite unconventional. Okay, I love it. I feel like you literally have your whole, like, even, like, your fashion, like, everything mapped out before you actually like move forward is that you like are you that i i mean structured clothes wise it's whatever's it's the like whole look like but i mean like is there is it like a new era i think so i think it's more about visually the videos and everything i feel like this album was a lot about figuring it out and seeing you know how we want everything to be what oh, is his name perfect. what's his name jules jules can we get a round of applause for jules everybody not only does he have Dua Lipa's back, he's but he's amazing. got your back too. I know it's tough. Again, Dua, do we have any timeline for the album? No pressure, no pressure. Not this year. Okay, so not this year, not but this you're year. touring. Hello, yes. so we're getting live I'm music. touring until the end of September. Okay. And then I'll be writing after that. We love it. Well, again, can we get a round of applause for Dua Lipa, everybody? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys.